the beginning, through the history of creation, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and there was total darkness. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light and found it was good. He divided the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness night. God ordered the waters under the heavens to be gathered together into one place, which he called seas, and the dry land appeared. After the Earth's creation, Mother Nature took over and continues to stamp its authority on the Earth's surface. This is, for instance, how the Great Rift Valley was formed. This is the Great Rift Valley, part of the Kenyan section. It stretches from Lebanon in Asia and cuts across Asia and Africa, all the way to Mozambique in southeastern Africa. The Great Rift Valley is approximately 6,000 kilometers in length and ranges in altitude from 395 meters below the sea level at the Dead Sea to 1,830 meters above the sea level in southern Kenya. The valley floor consists of flat plains, a series of lakes, hills and mountains, all of which emanated from massive eruptions and volcanic activities. Among the notable mountains in the valley floor include Mount Longonot and Menengai Crater. This is Mount Longonot found within the Great Rift Valley. It stands at about 750 meters above the Great Rift Valley floor and over 2,000 meters above the sea level. Mount Longonot was formed as a result of massive volcanic eruptions which created the Great Rift Valley itself. It displays a stunning and unique view that beckons from a far distance. It has also a summit cone capped by a 1.8 kilometer diameter crater rim, which is appealing and attractive to visitors. The mountain is excellent for hiking that creates a day's adventure. There are also excellent views of the surrounding landscapes on reaching the crater rim. Menengai Crater stands at an altitude of 2,278 meters above the sea level. Located at 10 kilometers north of Nakuru town in the Great Rift Valley, the mythical and mysterious Menengai Crater is a place where many strange things are believed to be happening, such as people disappearing without a trace as others lose directions for hours or days only to be found by their relatives wandering around in a trance. Its name, Menengai, is a Kikui word which means a place of many gods. A legend claims that Menengai Crater is home to many demons and ghosts, and as such, referred to as Kirimakyangoma by many locals, which means 
a mountain of devils. I have lived around this mountain for many years. When we came here, there was a lot of fear surrounding this mountain. We even said there was gravitational force that was pulling people towards the thicket. This place was thicker than it is today. For this reason, people said there were devils and that one could not go in there without castor oil to appease the devils. We developed courage and slowly started to explore the mountain. I have personally visited this crater many times and I have been from one extreme end to the other. Therefore, the way people say that there are devils in this mountain, I can confirm it is not true, for I have been in this place many times. I have never heard any devil sound, and I have also never carried any castor oil to appease the scene. There is nothing like the devil in there. You can even see Maasai herders down there. The situation here is like a person being taken right at the center of Nairobi city for the first time and left there to find his way out. The person is likely to get lost just like in this mountain. Even though people get lost, it is not what people think about the devil's spirit, but it is confusion in there that makes people miss their way out, especially if they are not familiar with the terrains of this mountain. In order to master our way out of this mountain, we began by marking our path through cutting some bushes so that we can easily find our way out and avoid confusion. In there, there are valleys such that if you go in different sides, you may not hear each other. It is only a person who is not familiar with the terrains of this mountain that can get lost out of confusion. Despite all these myths, Menengai Crater is one of the most attractive places in the country with its spectacular scenery and a promise of activities such as hiking, trekking, biking, camping and picnicking at strategic campsites. In the series of lakes in the Great Rift Valley, a majority of these lakes are salty water lakes, which means they do not have outlets. Unique for hot springs, Lake Bogoria in Baringo County is such a lake. Since time immemorial, Mother Nature has always provided hot springs at the boiling point, which eventually feeds the lake. The hot springs, which visitors use to boil eggs, green maize and other foodstuffs, puts Lake Bogoria ahead of the pack as a spectacular visitor's destination. To add icing on the cake, the frequent flow of flamingos in the lake makes it a place of natural choice for many people. Through history, the Great Rift Valley of East Africa is believed to be the cradle of mankind. This means that the earliest human species lived within its boundaries. Since there are no explicit records associated with its formation, the Great Rift Valley is an example where geography is regarded as the mother of history and how Mother Nature has over the years influenced its habitation history of flora and fauna. Faced with volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, fault lines, our ancestors may have endured unbelievable experience as this revolution is only unique, especially in the Great Rift Valley of East Africa. Today, it is home to pastoralist communities and both lowland and highland farmers.
Mother Nature has stricken the Great Rift Valley in various and mysterious ways. At Mai Mahu area, a huge fault line stretching several kilometers damaged and cut off Mai Mahu Narok Road, rendering the road impassable. The massive fault line, which in some sections runs 50 feet deep and 20 feet wide, caused fear among the residents who lost their homes as others got displaced. So severe and mysterious the fault line was that it swallowed some livestock and did not even spare trees. Experts are split down the middle as to the root cause of these fault lines. Some attribute the fault lines to the movements in the Earth's crust and volcanic activities within the Great Rift Valley. Others believe that Mother Nature is on a serious revenge mission following increasing degradation of ecosystems and the growing climatic change impact which directly affect the natural resources. We have lived in this area for over 30 years and we have never experienced something like this. We have even never seen any hole or depression of any kind. This fault line started from the main roadside and later reached our home. I was in the kitchen when my son noticed the crack which was widening fast. I came out and saw a crack that was growing bigger. My prayer is that the government should send experts to come on the ground and to assess and advise us whether it is safe to live in this place or not. In the event it is not safe to live here, the government should consider relocating us to safer ground. We are willing to comply with the government's directive regarding this place as we are now helpless. The house that was over here, which was near completion, is worth about 100,000 Kenya shillings. Over there, there were three houses. My main house, my bigger son's house, my younger son's house and a kitchen. The total damage amounts to over 300,000 Kenya shillings. This is so if you take into account iron sheets, timber, cemented floors and the general house properties. There is quite a lot of money gone to waste. The, the faults that we look, the ones we are talking about, that are responsible for the formation of the Rift Valley, are very deep-seated. Okay, so the cracks you see on the ground are just um, maybe a representation of down there, the mother fault. Mm -hmm. the, the cracks, mainly you will notice, they will happen during the rainy season. If you notice the, the case for Suswa or the Nakuru area, it's because the, of the rainy season. You know, on the Rift Valley, because of all the volcanic activity that has been taking place, we have, it's covered by volcanic ash. So what happens is this material, when it's not covered by vegetation, and then there's a lot of degradation, like over grazing, farming, wrong farming practices on, and all, what will happen is the, the, the soils become very friable or loose. So when it rains, the water will always look for a weak point. Okay. So this, this loose material is already, um, will be washed away and it will expose what, what is down there. So when this material is washed away, that's where you find this fractures op opening up. Yeah. The Maimahi one, is a, it, there's a buried fault. It's far below. It's in our geological maps. Like when they were doing, probably when they were doing the roads, maybe the engineers didn't do or they didn't have the right people to do it like the geologist they usually should be a teamwork eh? when you're doing such a road there are some geotechnical works that need to be done on different sections of the road first you have to do a background check look at the geological maps what well, there are faults then it will direct you on the what what you're supposed to do preventive measures if it's a bridge you're supposed to put or whatever to to make the road firm The White House estate in the outskirts of Nakuru town was not spared by these cracks menace. Located at the foot of Menengai crater, the White House estate residents experienced huge cracks which are five feet wide in some sections and stretches about 40 meters in length. 
the residents live in fear of losing their properties and even their lives. I live in White House Estate and water is wreaking havoc on us. In fact, if you look behind me, you will see a collapsed wall. Water is flowing with a force into my house. In fact, if you come to my house, you will see I have placed some of my properties above the floor as water is flooding everywhere, including my bedroom. It reaches to a point when it rains and I'm away, I am worried. It also reaches to a point when I cannot report to work for fear of the rain's consequences. This is because in this house there are children and when it rains, the water will find its way into the house which has electricity. This forces me to stop everything and stay in the house to face the water menace as an adult. The work involves drawing water out of the house. If it rains now, it will force me to remove some of the affected properties outside to dry as water invades everywhere in the house. We monitor any movements of the earth and also we do some analysis of gas samples. So from the gas samples it can tell us if we expect any earthquake or any happening that would affect you know, infrastructure or lives of people. So what I can assure Kenyans at the moment we have not seen anything major that would be of, you know, of, of interest or alarming. Mother Nature is very unkind and unforgiving, especially when the right measures are not put in place. Once it is mishandled, it has a way of expressing its wrath by hitting back mercilessly. This is what befell Solai residents in the Solai Dam tragedy, when man interfered with the natural flow of water by constructing the dam upstream. This is the leftover of the infamous Solai Dam in Subukia sub-county of Nakuru County. The dam was built on higher ground and designed to supply water through natural forces. The cracks developed on the dam's banks and due to pressure of the full to capacity dam, the water broke the bank and gushed out with a mighty force that left a trail of destruction along its path. This is how the water began its deadly journey. Christened the Killer Dam, Solai Dam killed over 40 people and displaced over 400 families. In the coming days, if we haven't changed the way we are doing things, if we haven't done the vegetation cover, but I know in Suswa and around my Mahio, there's the community has been doing a lot of conservation. They are trying to plant the leleshua. If you have noticed, you know the leleshua tree, the, the traditional tree, it's very good at holding the soil together. And if you reduce over grazing, it will help in conservation of the area. Yeah. Because this, this loose material is because of overgrazing and then there's no vegetation cover. But the community and some organizations are doing a lot in conserving the environment. So I'm expecting that maybe this time we won't have that issue again. Yeah. What started as an act of God's creation and perpetuated by Mother Nature has brought both joy and misery almost in equal measure to the habitants of the Great Rift Valley. There is therefore urgent need to sustain our natural environment so that Mother Nature can accommodate flora and fauna in this world just as God intended in the beginning. <laughs> 